spread out all over the ocean. Hundreds of ships standing out to sea. Freighters, tankers, troop transports, and their naval escorts. This is a task force, an invasion task force. And with this escort go cutters of the United States Coast Guard. In time of war, a part of the U.S. Navy. It's easy at first. Coast Guard planes are above, flying ahead of the convoy to make certain that the seas are clear of any lurking enemy U-boats or surface raiders. But you know that these planes will leave you after a while. Then you'll be on your own. There are more ships on every side of you now. More ships than you ever saw together before in your whole life. But the most important ships in this convoy are the troop transports. Many of them manned by Coast Guardsmen loaded with cargoes that can never be replaced. Troop transports are not expendable. So the soldiers take it easy now and trust the men of the Coast Guard and Navy to get them to their destination. Now they're just killing time, while they still have time to kill. Then there are the men of the tough merchant marine. They're out there with you, manning the cargo ships that carry the guns, munitions, and supplies. All the equipment necessary for the job ahead. the warships of the Navy are on every side. Their decks cleared and ready for action. Cutter you're aboard has taken its escort position now, and the daily routine starts. You stand your four-hour watch, then you're off four hours. And you put on the feed bag whenever you can, because soon the sea will be tossing your cutter around like a matchbox. Then food won't interest you. Topside, men are watching, always watching. And all the time the sound man is listening, hour after hour for the telltale sound that will reveal the presence of a prowling submarine. Rough weather now, and it's going to get rougher. But the Coast Guard and Navy like this kind of weather because they know that subs stay below when the going's as tough as this. There isn't much that holds a convoy together in a sea like this. Just some blinker lights. And always there's the everlasting threat of engine trouble aboard the merchant ships. If they do break down, you have to leave them behind. A convoy has a schedule to keep. Let a pea soup fog come down and everybody sweats blood for fear the ships will start bumping each other around out there. But the convoy maintains the same speed, fog or no fog. Coast Guardsmen know that when the weather clears, it's an invitation to pig boats to up periscopes and have a look around.
So you move along day to day, and each hour you're getting closer to Torpedo Alley. You've been through it before, and you all know what to expect. So you tighten up now and listen for the voice of the sound man. Anything that moves in the depths below is audible in his earphones. And then it comes. This is what you've been waiting for all these days. Then things start happening all at once. Cutter is tracking down the submarine, tracing its path, following its every turn. It's a battle of wits now between your cutter and the sub. You're ready for it. Ready to keep up the chase until you blast the sub from the sea. Now the plotting officer is tracing the path of the sub, plotting its position and gauging its speed. It takes time to fix the U-boat's position, but once you do, you're ready to move in on him. Once you force him to the surface, your deck guns open up. Nobody cheers when the sub goes down, because you know that the line between sinking a sub and getting sunk by one is too slim. You just watch and feel relieved that you've won, this time. The ships are back in their proper formation once again, and you're back to the monotony of convoy routine. For a while, the tension is relaxed, and there's a chance to get in some normal living. There are some jobs in the Coast Guard that are never finished. When you're off watch, you try to take it easy while you can, because you know grim business lies ahead of you. Sometimes you get together with the boys for a bull session and talk about the girlfriend back home, or just home. But when you want to be alone, and you feel like doing a little daydreaming, you get off by yourself and forget all about the Coast Guard, convoy duty, and the war. A 
Aboard the troop transports, while the Coast Guard do their part to push on to the goal, the soldier passengers try to adapt themselves to seafaring life as best they can. Sometimes it almost seems like a pleasure cruise. Almost. And finally, you run out of days. The time for the big show has come. Now the officers of every combat division are working out the final details of their landing problems together. They know that the success or failure of this operation depends on split-second timing. When the Navy starts sending out reconnaissance planes to take a look around, you know it won't be long now. Everyone tightens up, especially the troops. Tomorrow is the day, the day they've been preparing for. And the more they tighten up, the more they try to act as if tomorrow were just another day. Roger is the code name for the aircraft carrier in your convoy. And Roger has been waiting for this action ever since the convoy got within bombing range of land-based enemy aircraft. guns are in position, ready to soften up the shore for the invaders. time to knock out the enemy's shore batteries, so the guns keep pounding hour after hour. By dawn, the enemy's resistance has been weakened. Then, before you know it, it's time for the landing barge crews to do their job. Nobody hears much about these Coast Guard boys whose job it is to shuttle the troops from the ships to the beach in their armored water buggies. The troop 
Coast are waiting now, just waiting for the Coast Guard coxswain to get their barge to the beach. You've only got a mile to go to the beach now, but it seems like a hundred. And all the time you're waiting for the enemy planes or guns to open up and start pounding. Once the beach has been taken, you've got to ferry in enough equipment to keep the troops supplied until they're reinforced. When finally a port is taken, the troop transports move into whatever docks are left standing and unload their cargoes without wasting any time. And once the last ship is unloaded, your part of the job is done. You've delivered the goods. Your part in this operation is done. You've escorted the convoy, you've gotten the troop transports across, and you've landed the invaders. But there are other jobs ahead. And wherever or whatever those jobs may be, the men of the United States Coast Guard will be in there fighting.